Hi, okay, so today we're going to talk about sight words, right? Why are they important? Well, let me just clarify first. There's so many different trains of thought for this. I know many people who don't believe in sight words, who don't think that it should even be a thing. And then there's whole systems created to learn sight words. My daughter's school system has a whole system in place for learning sight words. So we are just gonna review how to use them today, okay? So sight words, um, they're words that just don't typically follow a phonics pattern, right? That means that maybe they can't be sounded out, or most often they can't be sounded out. So our thought is when children have a large, large vocabulary of sight words, their reading fluency improves. Hmm. And when their reading fluency improves, then their reading comprehension improves. And that's all we really want, right? We want our children to understand what they read, and that will take them a long way. They need to understand what they read in elementary school, middle school, high school, in college, right? We don't want them to just read and then they're like, what, what just happened? What? I don't know what that was. The reading comprehension goes all the way back to the reading fluency. So that's what these are. Yeah. This is one of my favorites. Hannah loves bright colors and all things bright. So I kind of, you know, compared to something black and white, she loves this. I found this on the internet. I just kind of laminated it. It's the first, you know, like 100 sight words. So you typically use them in groups of 10 groups of 10. So for example, I created this um, group of 10 kind of based off of the letter sounds that we were working on. And so, and it was kind of loosely based off of this first set of 10 that's right here. So I made my own set of 10, but 10 is a really good amount to work with at a time. I recommend that. Now with each set of 10, I have 10 different ways that you can use them. One, you can cut them up and then flash drive them, right? And like see it, say it. So flash drive, see it, say it, they see it, they'll say like. Okay, flip, go to the next one, right? Act, okay, flip, that's number one. Two, you can flash drive it and have them write it down. So they don't have to flash really, but it can be on the table and they can flip it, you know, on their own. But if you want to, you can. So this one, they would see it, they'd see me, and they would have their paper and pencil and they would write down me. And they would go to the next one. So you flash and it would say am, and they would say am, and they'd have to write it down. So we're writing it down. Three, I would have them flash drive and then say it in a sentence. So am. Here's am in a sentence. I am thirsty. Great job. All right, next one. A, there we go. A man delivered the Amazon box. So they use it in a sentence. Four. Place these around the house. So I recommend using painter's tape for sure so you don't ruin your beautiful walls. Place these around the house and as they see them or as you walk by them, have your child or your student tell you what it says. That's a super fun way to kind of have it incorporated and they're really not thinking about it but they're learning as they're living. Five. I say make two copies of these. You can kind of set them up around the house and then as they find them, ask them to find them all and then bring them to the table and match them. Maybe you don't have to put them all up on the walls, but you could maybe hide a few too. But have them bring them back and match it. So I would match the A with the second A, right? Six, you have two sets, so you might as well play the game memory. So set them out, turn them upside down, the two sets, and then you can play memory with your child and see if they can remember where, where the matches are to play that game with you. Kind of fun. Seven. I say you could go on a scavenger hunt, maybe a timed scavenger hunt. If you hide them everywhere and then you play it as a game, it could be a fitness game actually. Set them all over the house, maybe even outside and have them run around and go find them. Scavenger hunt. Eight. As your child finds one, so say they see, they see am, have them make a sentence. Say it out loud verbally and pass it. What's that word? Am. Can you say it in a sentence? Am I going to use my tablet today? That's what my kids would say, right? So that's great. See it, use it in a sentence. Love that. Number nine is they see it, 
So they have to go find one that they see that they know is somewhere around the house. They see it, they find it. And then they have to write it. So write the sentence. So if Mr. Snurple is purple, they have to write that down. And number 10. 10 is a little bit harder. So 10, they need to pick two of these. I have the and is. The balloon is blue. So then I would have to write that sentence down. You just want to make it fun for your child, right? And that's just one set. So you can do that with each one of these sets. And when you finish the set, find a way to make it exciting for your child. Give them a type of a reward, one that you can repeat at least 10 times, right? Because we have minimum 100 there words that we want to kind of work on. But make, give them some kind of reward, something that they look forward to, something that helps them feel accomplished. And make sure that you tell them, you know, wow, um, you really worked hard on that. Or I love, I love that that's such cre a creative sentence that you create, you know, wonderful sentence. That's such a wonderful sentence that you created. That's very inventive. I love the, the colors you chose when you wrote that sentence. Make sure that you're, you're giving them some positive feedback along the way. It will go far. All right, that is our sight words for now. I hope you enjoy learning yours. We are reviewing ours at home right now. Bye.